Have you ever wondered, can you communicate directly with spirit guides, teachers, or non-physical consciousness, or even our higher selves? What would they tell us? My name is Kevin Moore, and since 2015, I started to practice a form of communication which is termed channeling. I have been interviewing experts on my talk show to find out, does life continue after we die? And can we communicate with those that have crossed over? With each expert I spoke to, they all had different ideas. Is there knowledge from the past which could be shared with the present moment? So I thought, why not just speak to the non-physical world directly through channelers around the world? And that's what I set out to do. They call us channelers will take the viewers on a journey into the phenomena known as channeling. And my main goal with this docu-series is to bring a new understanding and awareness to channeling by looking within ourselves and asking, is it truly possible that we can all use this innate ability? Well, Sarah Landon, welcome to the show. Thank you. It is uh, beautiful to have you on, okay? And it was Lee Harris that connected us, so I'm so grateful yes. for that. Yes. How long have you known Lee for? I have not known Lee for a long time. Just met him um, in this year. Obviously, we do similar work, and we connected and just shared our experiences, and he's really one of the people I've met in this uh, in this industry that has very similar experiences and, and story as I do. So we really enjoyed connecting on that and uh, understanding more about what each one of us experience in this, in this work. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I've, you know, there's, there must have been so many other channelers that you've met on your path as well. You know, surprisingly, early on in my life, I had experiences with channelers. And I think this is sort of a misnomer. People think we all kind of know each other and you may know of a few people, but primarily in my work, I get guided to stay really clear and just listen to my work and not listen to a lot of other things. And so we don't necessarily all know each other. Um, Lee and I met through a mutual friend whose show we've both been on and that's how we became connected. But when I, um, when I was seven years old, I, uh, my, my parents were, uh, got divorced and we ended up moving in with my aunt who at the time, uh, my family is traditionally very Christian. My dad's side of the family was very Lutheran. My mom's side was Presbyterian. And um, after a series of incidences in my aunt's life, she was guided to spirituality and started working with a channel. Uh, and so that was really her first experience or anyone in our family of spirituality in this way and so she was studying with the channel when my parents separated and we went and lived with her so i was exposed to it from the time i was seven years old and while i had a deep love for jesus and um and the sense of community that i had from church when i first heard channeling from this woman that she studied with it just resonated with me at such a young age that it was absolute truth. Oh my gosh. Absolute truth. Yeah. That there were many paths to God, that the ultimate religion is love, that God is love, that we are so much more powerful than we realize, that we're not these limited bodies that we know as, as you and me, although that's a wonderful thing, right? That there's so much more to us. And it talked about ultimate forgiveness, it talked about past lives, and it just resonated to me as absolute truth. So from a very young age, I was exposed to a couple of different channelers. Um, and then for many, many years, I had nothing to do with channeling at all. Wow, so what channel, who, what, which channel was this? So uh, it was a channel by the name of uh, Mafu, and the woman's name I believe was Penny Torres. 
And I, I don't know if she's still channeling or not uh, nowadays, but um, my aunt had also done some work with Jay-Z Knight and uh, with Ramtha early on in Ramtha's experience. And so um, I had also read a book by Ramtha and really resonated deeply with the book. I've never actually experienced either of their channels in person just through video and watching them, yeah. Is, is J.C. Knight still around? I think yeah, she is, yeah. Yeah, I think she is as well. well yes. is, she, is she based in California? Or? In Washington State, yeah. Washington, Washington State. State. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, um, that's an interesting story <laughs> to have that kind of background. Yes, well and even more uh, kind of ironic in all of it was earlier this year I did a, a show called Beyond the Ordinary and when I, when I got the um, information to send out, you know, we get these solo emails that we sort of send out and there's the pictures of everyone. My picture was right next to Jay-Z Knight. And I thought, you know, how funny to have that come full circle. If you ever would have told me in my life, even 10 years ago, you're going to be on a show, you know, with your picture right next to Jay-Z Knight. And it certainly wasn't my aspiration. Someone asked me one time, when did you decide you wanted to become a channeler? And my answer is still the same today. I'm still not sure. I still haven't really decided, but it's who I am and it's what I do and I truly believe my entire life was preparing me to bring this wisdom and love and consciousness through to humanity and I just, at some point in my life, it became choiceless. So growing up, did you have sisters, brothers? Um, I was essentially an only child by my parents. My mother had um, three children from a previous marriage and um, so I had two older brothers and an older sister. And so uh, that is really what sort of opened my connection um, to something more going on. Um, in 2001, my oldest brother was killed in a car accident and died fairly instantly. And um, I was living in Washington State at the time and I ended up flying up to Alaska and, and this whole time, sort of having, and this was a time in my life where I couldn't even use the word God, and I could share kind of that whole backstory, but I still believed in all the spiritual things that I had um, sort of remembered as a kid, uh, but I hadn't really figured out my place in the world, and I didn't want to be weird or woo-woo in my beliefs. I really love my Christian family. I have a lot of Christian friends, and I, I didn't want to... Um, be weird. I didn't want to be sort of rejected, so I didn't really know what I believed at that point. Um, and I went to my brother's funeral, and the day before, uh, we had a viewing of the body, just the family, and and I walked into this room. It was the first dead body I'd ever seen, and my brother was laying there, and the room was really cold and really heavy. And I walked in with my mom and my other brother and my sister, and I walked up to his body, and I touched it and I just, you know, it was just this experience that I just can't even describe. It was so odd, you know, it was so, I was so confused. And I went and sat down on this chair in the room and his body was over on the left side of me. And I sat down and I just kind of closed my eyes and probably within a, like two minutes, this feeling just came over me. And it felt like it started in the top of my head and it was like, the most incredibly peaceful, loving, blissful is the only way I can describe it. Energy, like liquid love, just went through my body. I couldn't feel the chair that I was sitting on. The room was not cold anymore. I was in total peace. And I heard my brother say over my right shoulder, I'm still here, but I'm not in there. And I said in my head back to him, I said, where are you? And he said, I'm just as here as I ever was. I just left the density of the body. And, and it, it just, it was truth. It was absolute truth in my being, the love that came through with it. I began to feel when his vibration would come through. And so for about 10 years, I had that experience and I, I shared it with a couple of people, um, but not many. I still was very much in the closet about my spirituality and my connection. Um, but it really opened me up and answered so many questions for me. And I really do believe that that was part of the journey of getting to this place now of, of channeling in a way that, um, that I do uh, now, which is so different than that experience. Did he communicate to you in, the, in those 10 years? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
And what kind of yeah. conversations were you having in those 10 years? So I would ask, you know, what is God? So my brother, when he was alive, um, w would consider himself Christian, would consider himself very Christian. And we have some very strong Christians in our family. But I could feel him coming through and he had a very, he has a very unique personality. He was a very, very loving guy. And I would feel that personality come through, but from the um, most loving, open, uh, forgiving space for all things and everyone. And I would ask him questions about God. You know, what is the purpose of all of this? Is there a hell? Is there a heaven? It was really a time in my life um, where I was seeking the answers to rationalize my spirituality with traditional Christian beliefs and still having that love for Jesus, but also having felt um, very hurt by people who, um, you know, have the belief that Jesus Christ is your savior or you go to hell, right? And so um, it was an amazing experience. And then from there, uh, I think having the experience of receiving my brother and getting so comfortable with it was part of the process of being able to get to a point of, of channeling. And then it really opened up into receiving a much broader collective experience of consciousness. And so I still feel my brother, I still feel his love, I still um, communicate with him. But now it's just sort of like, I know he's always there and it's moved forward to more of an expansive experience for me. Wow, but, but then you must have had some deep conversations <laughs> deeper than just that as well. I mean, that's yeah. great stuff you said there and that would be so, uh, what a transformation that must have been for you, right? Um, but I can, but then was there deeper questions? Because when you've got that on tap sometimes, you know, I mean, you've got to go where your interests are. Maybe yours was just surface level healing, which was just so important for your soul. Yeah, yeah. I am... Um you know, from the time I was about 16 years old, 14, maybe 15, 16, I got really interested in personal development and sort of this art and science of achievement and goals. More of attraction and kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, you know, studying with Tony Robbins and oh, really? people that who, who, when you take massive action, you know, you can He's a channel. do anything, He's right? He's a channel. Yeah, yeah. He's channeling that and information. And so that, and, and I believe, Personally, um, and we talked about this earlier, I truly believe everybody is, on some level, a channel. Okay then, so what is a channel to you? So a channel is, it, it, when you are channeling, it's any moment that you sort of step outside of your, get out of your own way and let some higher perspective flow through you. Um, it, it's, the, it's being tuned in, this power greater than you that you're allowing through you. So like an athlete, for example, when they're really in the zone, right? They, I believe, are in a channeled state. Bringing a greater aspect of themselves yes. through. Yes, and a greater power. They're allowing a greater power through them, through their focus in that moment. Were they that power all the way along? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the power's not separate from us. We just sort of cut it off. We learn to not trust it. We learn to not listen to it. We learn to be logical make logical decisions. And I do believe that our thoughts create the vibration by which we are functioning. And so when, you're, when your thoughts are heavy, right? If you think about someone and you look at them, you can tell how they feel by the way that they're walking, right? If their head is kind of down and their shoulders are shrugged, they're in a heavy vibration. Either they're worried or stressed or anxious or feeling guilty or in fear. You mm. can see it. And then you can see someone with their shoulders back and their head high and there's their light in their eyes, right? And they're usually the most positive, uplifting, happy people. They're just at a higher vibration. And I believe that when we are in that higher vibration, it's a lot easier for us to access uh, unity consciousness, access vibrations of joy, which the council always says is, oh. is where your higher self is, is where this higher perspective of your life is. Oh, so something that, like the law of attraction is more, um, is, is more powerful and more alive when you're coming from a more um, awakened, consciously perspective in your life. And I don't even think you have to be consciously aware of it. I think there's people out there that are receiving divine intelligence or infinite intelligence 
through just being in that state of joy that they might not even associate with any type of paranormal experience. Yes, and I bet if you did the research, you'll find out that, that a lot of people that do not use the words or the yeah. analogies that we're using would be coming from that joyous space yeah. in their life. Yeah, yeah. What causes Absolutely. a person then to not be joyous in their life then? I mean, oh. compared to someone that's joyous, could you, is that easy to sum up or is that a, you know, like a life's worth, worth, worth of work? That's a, that's a big question. <laughs> yeah. um, we just forget the truth of who we are. And we think that we're here to earn something. We, we have to make a living, we have to earn a living. We sort of have this belief that we're taught early on that we have to exchange our truth and sort of betray our own soul for love and acceptance and approval. And so we often er learn early on to sort of go against our own truth. And we do things to fit in, we do things for love, we do things for acceptance and approval. And you know, for me, when I was, um, I grew up with a very, very loving family. We didn't have a lot of money. Um, but I grew up in a really loving family. I don't feel like I ever wanted for anything. I feel um, very blessed by the parents that I, that I had as well, which the council would say that I chose. But, <laughs> you know, I, I also um, really acknowledge that not everybody had a joyful childhood or upbringing. And in doing this work um, with the council, I've, I've had the experience of um, understanding the trauma that some people have experienced and, and how could there possibly be some greater power in you when you have, the, the uh, misunderstanding is how could there be when some of these things have happened in your life, when people have treated you in certain ways. And so I think our life experiences sometimes for people get so heavy that they, they take on um, shame and guilt and fear and it's really hard to get to joy from that place. But you said thank you for what you just shared there. And you said as well, I um, hope I've got this right, that you know, to get into that joyous space, it's becoming aware of who you really are. Mm -hmm. but, though, but those that are coming from that joyous space who don't ever get into these subjects, mm -hmm. are they aware of who they are, but they're in denial of that awareness? Well, I think it's different for everybody. I think each person sort of has their their own experience now of what this is of what this is who I am behind my right. eyes right what is that right. awareness beyond the awareness yeah exactly exactly so some people have maybe had a moment of it some people have maybe had a, a deeper experience of it I think that oftentimes we ask ourselves who am I in times that appear to us like moments that are bad or something has gone wrong so you know, a death of a loved one, it makes us really question life. You know, if you, if you struggle with any type of disease or experience of cancer or anything where you're facing your own um, mortality, it sort of opens you up to these questions. Um, you know, going through a divorce or a very painful emotional experience. You know, alcoholism, drugs, I also find that people who um, struggle with addiction are, are often looking for the high that somewhere within them they remember that there's this higher state that's possible here. And so I, I think we can come upon it in many different ways and there's no right way and there's no wrong way except what I think is going on right now is that there's really a quickening, that transformation for people to remember who they are, to awaken to their truth can be easier and more harmonious and a much more loving journey than maybe some people have experienced in the past. And I think it is because of, um, the council says that one of us connected to our source, sort of living in that vibration of joy is more powerful than a million that are not. So as we have more and more and more people awakening, we are contributing to raising the vibration, which makes it easier for others to get into this higher vibrational state. How does someone in any religion awaken to the higher power within them when their truth in that one book, one solitary mm -hmm. book that has the only truth, mm -hmm. denies itself of that truth to go beyond that book? Yeah, great question. Um, this was sort of my journey as well. I, I do believe that these books are based in truth. If you think of the Bible, which is probably the uh, fundamental book we refer to, right? I do believe there's 
an incredible amount of truth in it. I think it was channeled material, right? I think it's been interpreted over time. You know, you, you, All um, prophets were channeled. and I, I don't mean this in any disrespect, but it's been interpreted and interpreted and interpreted um, for 2000 years now, right? So you think about if you're a kid, if you ever played the telephone game, do you know that game where you whisper in someone's ear, like, Bobby told Sally to go to the store for groceries, right? And you go around a circle and each person whispers in the other person's ear the same thing. And by the time you get back around, it's Jack and Jill ran up the hill to fetch a bucket of water, right? The names change, the story changes, the, the meaning of it changes. People interpret it. The because truth. it's been interpreted. Yeah. And um, the council has talked about this a lot, but you know, I believe the in initial teachings all, if you go back and look at them, if you compare the different religions, they're all essentially at their core saying the same thing, right? The kingdom of God is within. I think the most important teachings of the Bible, the two things that I believe were Jesus' most fundamental teachings were love God with thy whole heart, mind, mind body, and soul, right? I can tell you in doing this work, that is the experience. It is this love of source, God, your higher self, it, it, the power within you, with every part of your being, and self-love being the way to this connection with source. Well, then, then, then obviously we could say that, you know, a soul may choose an experience of mm -hmm. being in a Christian or Muslim or any yeah. faith-based yeah. religious system to have an experience restrictions. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. How do you learn to be free? Because you usually have explored bondage. It, exploring being, feeling limited or in lack is all, always the thing that, that pushes you to be really clear yes. on what you want. Yes. Freedom, abundance, yes. feeling this power within you, yeah. right? Yes, yes, ab ab absolutely, absolutely. And uh, sometimes this can be a bondage, you know, even channel material can in one sense, because people get addicted to not looking for their own oh, truth. Yeah. And, and I think this is, I think there's a progression of this. If you look at... I mean, I prefer um, over religion any day, I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I completely agree. And, and the council would say, you're your own greatest lover, you're your own best friend, and you're your own greatest teacher you are right we're always teacher and we're always student each one of us but you can sometimes get so into looking for the answers outside of you instead of using this um, as a format to go deeper into yourself and discover your truth and release any limitations of being who you are so so this awakening that you talked about part of that awakening is to go within and find your own truth mm -hmm. and channeling is one form of going within mm -hmm. and channeling has many different uh, mm -hmm. levels yeah yes absolutely yeah. and it's expressed differently for all people some people have like an automatic writing experience mm -hmm. where they sit down i think if we look at all the books that have been written, I, I remember one of my favorite books is The Alchemist, and I remember Channel. hearing hearing him say that he basically sat down and wrote the whole book in two weeks. And mm. and so, authors, musicians, athletes, in some way, shape, or form, I think we're all channeling. It's not this totally out there woo woo thing, and yet we are here to explore. We we are here to explore. We're I. Do not believe and the council does not teach that you came into this life experience to wrong any right from the right any wrong from the past you know you're not here to fix a broken world and and you're not here as some form of punishment your life experience is meant to be fun it's meant to be good for you and if it's not you've just picked up in your experience things that are not the truth of you that you've made your truth and how can you tell by the way that you feel but then you put some people under aggression and they say, well, listen, the, the reason you've got yeah. this issue is because in this particular life, you, you didn't, you know, you, you had vows of um, poverty and vows of this and that, yeah, for example, and you've just, you know, you're expressing some of those vows in this life, you don't need to anymore. So is, 
Is that the universe saying, the clever God saying, you know what, I'll give them the false memory that that is true, so I don't force it upon them that it's not. So they then come up with their own conclusion, whether it feels right or not, and it's done in a very gentle way. Mm -hmm. Or did that past life really exist? I mean, we, we understand, as I've gone on this journey, that there is no such thing as time. It's man-made. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So it becomes oh, very blurry oh, yeah, yeah. to what this really is. Yeah, yeah. So I, I do not disagree with anyone else's truth. Um, if, if that is what someone feels is truth for them and the experience that they have, um, I, I completely support it. So I'm not disagreeing. I, um, about 20 years ago, I had my own experience of, of exploring reincarnation and having some past life regressions. And, um, and I had this incredible vision. Um, I, I had this fear that my mother was going to die. And I did this past life regression, got into this meditative state, and I had this vision which in my experience at that time I believed was was a past life where I was my mother's daughter no I was my mother's mother in that life so I was the mother and she was the daughter and she drowned and I couldn't get to her and save her and I had this experience as if it was real and I came back out of it and I never again feared that my mother would die so I don't disagree with any of those things. I think that is a phase of, of um, is a part of the process of getting into spirituality, a, a pathway by which it opens people up to what else is possible. Um, I do believe that all things are happening now, that there is no time and space, that, that there isn't a past necessarily the way that we think about it. And as we awaken fully in this life, the personality that you know is you, you awaken all unconscious parts of you in any life experience that may be happening. So the past could even be awakening the moment now. Yes. And I've had some experiences of this. And the future could be coming into yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not to overcomplicate anything. No. <laughs> um, but I do think no. we all have guides. And I do think that our guides can act out anything that would help us bring an unhealed part of us to the surface in order to heal. And so I, um, my, my experience now is that things are not necessarily a um, like lack in a past life that is, that is holding you in poverty in this life, but that if there is experiences that you're having, yes. they are coming forth to help you heal and release it. And it doesn't necessarily matter where it comes from. The fact that it's coming up right now Yes. For you to be conscious of it and heal it and release it is, is the most important part. You know, uh, being on this journey of meeting <laughs> over 30 plus channels yeah. now, yeah. right? And eight years of a talk show on, on, online in the esoteric, mm -hmm. I've come to the idea that there's a new evolution of work coming through yes. nowadays. Yes. And it's no longer the Brian Wises, the Neil Donald Walshes, yes. the Esther Hicks, mm -hmm. the, 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 all these great, amazing people it's something new coming through. Uh, yes, and totally agree. It's the evolution of the next stage of work. People think, well, they brought this out. That's the truth. That's the only truth. That's the truth, mate, that you're, that, that you're aware of. Yeah. There's actually something much, much, yeah. much, 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 yeah. much, much, much more. So it just seems to be that time right now where that wants to come through mm -hmm. for some reason. And mm -hmm. I feel that I'm bringing it through mm -hmm. and there'll be others like me bringing it through like even you know with one channel I just got into the subject of the life between life no the life review stage yeah. and it was like hang on there's more to the life review stage it's not just you go and review a life get to feel what the others made you feel like and all this you actually get to relive the life if you want yes. to live it again yes and you can go back and heal it in that moment but you wouldn't and, know you're living right. it you yeah. would, I mean who yeah. knows this could be yeah. a, 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 it just seems because the, the people will then get into well, hang on, we'd all would have to be on a mass, mm -hmm. you know, life review. But I don't know about any of that, right? Yeah. I just know that this you could take apart like an onion and keep peeling just one subject away and away and away yes. and away. So, um, what does that all mean? I think it it is it, it's showing people that there's something so much more. Mm -hmm. I keep saying mm -hmm. that. Yeah. What, what does that yeah. mean in your opinion? Yeah, so I love that you asked this question and that we're talking about this because I think it's so, so, so important. Um, I agree with you completely. And in fact, I just we did a course with the council called The Next Evolution of Mastery, which is beyond the law of attraction. And the law of attraction got us to a particular place. The, a, a majority of us 
got to this certain level of consciousness, and this is what the council says all the time, we, there's always more. There's so much more, but you've got to, you've got to be in the vibration where you can hear these truths and hear these answers. So to make it as simple as possible, I, I think what, what I look at as, you know, getting really in alignment with your soul and your soul's desires, because we have these human desires and the law of attraction. And I, I kind of started telling you about my journey with personal development and I'll answer your yes. question in kind of yes. this way. So I started with personal development, this belief that I could put my mind to anything, take massive determined action and go from being, you know, very simple, modest upbringing to manifesting what I thought would be the life of my dream. So I looked outside of myself and I said, okay, I want to make this much money. I want this big a house. I want this many cars. The, yeah. yeah. And, and I didn't have a vision board at that time, but I just knew that if I wrote down my goals and then my whole focus and attention was on achieving those goals, no matter what happened, right? At all cost, I'm going to achieve these goals. I found that it happened. It worked. I, I got everything I wanted. And then I looked around at my life and said, why doesn't this feel the way it was supposed to feel? Why does this not make me happy? I'm living what seemed like a perfect life. And yet I wasn't happy. You, it, there was something within me. You created that with yeah. unhappiness in the background as well. Well, and sort of looking outside of myself and saying, well, that person has a lot of money, so they must be happy. This person has this kind of house and they must be happy versus really tuning into what my soul's desires were and having those come from a different place. And when you live aligned with your soul's desires, sort of the divine plan for your life, it looks a little different. So I'll give you an example of law of attraction. And Lee and I were talking about this yesterday. So law of attraction would say that if you're in vibrational alignment, if you're, if you're in a high vibration and you're going traveling, that your every flight's going to be on time, that you get upgraded to first class, that the red carpet's kind of laid out for you because you're in, in alignment to your highest vibration and everything happens that you want, right? And what I think we're starting to understand is, I recently had this experience. I was traveling back um, from a family wedding and my flight was delayed six hours. And the me 10 years ago before being a channel and doing this work would have been frustrated, would have been like, come hell or high water, I'm getting out of here, I'm, I can make that happen. And I would have pushed and forced until I was exhausted, but I would have gotten my way and I would have gotten out of there, right? The basis of the council's teaching is that life is meant to be easy, effortless, and harmonious. And when you're in this flow of life is when the greatest miracles and unexpected blessings and the true joys of life come. So I believe I have to practice my own teachings of what comes through me, right? So I'm like, okay, flight is delayed. You know, I'm just going to be present. I'm not going to push against this moment. I'm just going to be really present. And I had this sense that I was exactly where I needed to be. And I ended up going into this little restaurant. I was the only one in the restaurant. And the guy who was bussing the tables and, and bartending and waiting on everyone was just this one guy. And, and then it was just me in there. And I ended up sitting and having this conversation with this guy about consciousness, about um, spirituality. And I just was so present with him. And I just could feel this love, just this, this beautiful love of just being present with this person. And afterwards, and he stayed open for three hours while I sat there delayed and we just talked. And afterwards he said, that's the best conversation I've ever had. Now, most of it wasn't me. Most of it was just holding the space for whatever wanted to come through to him. And I would have missed that opportunity had I thought, you know, the only way you're in alignment is if you're in, you know, on time and the way you think it should be. My flight ended up being canceled. And so I ended up going back. I was staying with my dad and going back to my dad. And the next day on the way to the airport to catch my other flight, I ended up having the most beautiful, um, moving, touching conversation with my dad that I've ever had. And it was, I won't even say it was an opportunity to heal, but it was just, it took us to a whole new level of unconditional love for one another that wouldn't have happened if I would have been on the flight that I thought I was supposed to be on. So when we 
are present and we can allow ourselves to be guided where we need to go, to be used, um, as I would say, as an instrument of the divine, your life will change. Things that you never thought were possible for you, things open up and there is so much more available to us when we live in that space. And, and just so I've got this in my head right, because it's, I try not to make this too mental, but it's, when you say guided, it's, so you're still setting out, I would like to experience whatever I'd like to experience, but you're going with whatever the outcome's going to be. So two things on this. The, the way the council would say it is, you know, you are absolutely creating your life experience with your thoughts, the thoughts you're thinking, what you're focused on, what your attention is what you're holding in your imagination. A lot of times we say, oh, well, I don't use my imagination. And even when you're thinking of an unwanted situation or living in the past, uh, having an argument with someone in your head, you're in your imagination. So why not use your imagination for the experiences you do want to have and be focused on what you do want to be experiencing? The way the council says it is, what do you want to explore next? Think about it as exploring things instead of um, being so, so specific. Most of the time where we get into trouble with this is we're so specific on what we want. I personally, it, I had to unlearn many, many things through living the teachings of the council. I, I had to unlearn trying to force and effort things. And I did not go easily on that one, right? I had to unlearn being so specific on what I wanted or the way I thought it had to come that I missed the gift in the whole experience, right? So you can be more general. You don't have to be so specific on what you want. And if you can even say, I, I, what is in my highest and best good? This or something better, right? We end up on this journey to what we think we want. It's who we become in the process. And usually when we get there, something better happened that we weren't even thinking about. But if you're so focused on a particular goal, you might miss it. I, I, I've kind of lost my focus on so many things right now. And um, I just don't know even what I think anymore. Well, no, I do, but I don't, I, I don't, I'm not that, I've not got it in me. I want this, you know, I want to get this up and running and do this and I'm like, Shit, have you lost your get up and go? And I'm like, I don't, I, I don't want to be not achieving that which I could in my life because life is so precious and short, yeah? It's so short. But at the same time, it's like, you know, I was having this conversation with this TV production lady and I was like, I don't care if, you know, if, if, if we get greenlit for stuff or not. I mean, you know, it's out of my control, but it doesn't mean I'm not, I don't love it or it's not something I'm really passionate yeah. about. But yeah. even the word passionate, I don't, I don't really like that word anymore. It sounds so... So the council calls this the void. It's a really good place to be. And here's what they explain is going on. Most of our lives, we have all done things because we were motivated. We've done things because we were being motivation and motivation was driving all things. And motivation is avoiding an unwanted circumstance, right? So we're usually motivated by the fear of avoiding some unwanted circumstance, missing my opportunity. I don't want to run out of money. I don't want to mm -hmm. end up poor or broke. So I'm motivated mm -hmm. to go get a job. Mm -hmm. I'm motivated. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to be irrelevant in life. I mm -hmm. want to be approved and accepted, mm -hmm. right? I don't mm -hmm. want to be rejected or thought of being lazy. So, so that fear of, of avoiding some unwanted situation motivates you to take some action so yeah. that you're taking action in order to be worthy and relevant. So when you start doing this work for a while and you sort of release these limiting beliefs, you sort of become more aware of the truth of who you are, you're not motivated by things the same way. And what you're actually going for is inspiration. But here's the funny thing about inspiration. So motivation is always around taking some sort of action out of fear of uh, avoiding something unwanted. Inspiration is a very different place. It's that idea that comes in the middle of the night. It's that, it, we call it inspired ideas, inspired actions. 
and we think because we are taught that we have to be doing, doing, doing instead of being, 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 we think we should be getting inspired actions all the time. And we think we should know the whole path to the inspired action. But usually what we get is the next perfect step and the next perfect step and the next perfect step. And we don't need inspired action all the time. So what are you supposed to be doing with all this extra time when you're not running around being motivated all the time? And the council says you should be doing what brings you joy. So if you think about it in your own life, what really brings you joy, Kevin? I would say right now it's uh, making discoveries on, on the nature of reality, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're subconscious mind can begin to recognize and even your conscious mind and having a business yeah of some sort. yeah brings you joy right it keeps me grounded yeah yeah so there's a really easy process anytime you're feeling that sort of either overwhelmed or um, like you're not very inspired you're not feeling very passionate about life anytime you sort of notice you're in this not really good feeling place the council says close your eyes Take a deep breath, just smile, and ask yourself, what can I do right now that would bring me joy? And then go do that thing. Sometimes just asking yourself that question, you sort of activate this vibration of joy within you. You kind of, you start focusing on joy. You've got your subconscious mind kind of looking for joy. Mm -hmm. You're, you're mm -hmm. consciously focused on it. Mm -hmm. And then go do something that brings you joy. And from that vibration, if there's any inspired action you need, it'll be there because you're in the vibration of the answers. Uh, thank you so, so much for what you've talked about so far as well. I mean, I'm sure there's so much to this work, right? The scope of it as well. Let, let's just um, bring it back a bit as well. Thank you for what you shared. Um, I always try to just ask questions that others may be thinking mm -hmm. of as well and mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a bit of a balance sometimes between that and your own fascination with it um, or what you're going through but bringing it back then so yeah, yeah where was the point where the, where the council came through what what career did you have up to that point where that came through and what yeah. was the pinnacle what brought them through yes so my career uh, started off in sales and then I got into technology and IT strategy consulting. And as I shared with you earlier, I was um, part of a company that we sold to a, a much larger company over in Europe. So uh, for about 16 years of my life, I was traveling pretty much every, uh, pretty much every week, every other week for work. Um, I worked with large corporate uh, Fortune 200 companies. And we, it, my life was all about numbers and sales and driving business um, in, a, in, a, um, in a very large company. And, um, and I was always still very curious about spirituality in my, in my spare time. That's what I read. That's kind of what I did. And um, around 2006, seven, my entire life sort of uh, <laughs> changed. Let's just put it that way. So um, in 2006, I got cancer. Um, I got advanced malignant melanoma. Uh, I had several surgeries in about a year and a half, and I was sort of forced to sit on my couch and do essentially nothing for about a year. And um, at that time, I, I couldn't go force and do my normal, you know, goal-oriented, action-oriented stuff, and so I had to be really still, and I had to be really quiet. And, uh, and when I did, I realized that I wasn't really living my truth. So you got to face death? Yeah. Yeah. I had uh, the real experience that I might die before I ever really lived the life that I had dreamt for myself. What, and, what did uh, that do for you mentally to, to face your death? Ah, uh, I don't think there's any words for it. It just puts everything in perspective really, really quickly. All the things that you thought mattered, the money, the car, the stuff, the, you know, trips, all of that, it didn't matter. It, it was all about love <clears throat> and the people that I loved and, um, and about looking myself in the mirror and, and sort mm -hmm. of saying, is this what you want your life to be? And um, 
I kept having surgeries over and over again. The cancer kept coming back. <clears throat> and yeah. um, uh, one day I had this experience, um, the very last melanoma that I had, that um, my doctor sort of said to me, and maybe he was, you know, in a place where he was receiving some wisdom outside of him in that moment, but said, um, this is coming from you. You're the only one that can stop this. I can't really help you anymore. And, um, and it just hit me like a two by four over the head that I literally was, in my experience, um, had manifested cancer in my own life so that I didn't have to keep living this life that didn't feel like my truth. And um, when I figured that out, I thought, no, like, I want to live. I, I know within me the truth that anything is possible for me, and I'm going to change my life. And I made that decision, and the cancer went away, and I've never had it again. So for, I always tell people, first off, um, I know that no one would ever consciously create disease, or cancer or anything in their body. So I do not mean to imply, and I, and I um, certainly in my work, I would never say to someone, you know, you created this terrible thing that you don't want, right? That, that's, um, I, I, I think we've, we've missed the mark a little bit on that one. Well, they um, may not be ready to hear that as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so also at that time, when I was sitting on the couch, I came across um, through watching Oprah <laughs> which I never was home to do before, and I started, suddenly great. got to watch Oprah, but uh, yeah. it was when she had Eckhart Tolle oh, on yes. with A New Earth. Yes. And I read that book, and I did not understand a lot of that book, but it awakened something in me. And I heard as clear as day that I was supposed to be a spiritual teacher. And so then I went looking for what is a spiritual teacher. And so... Um, after I healed up from cancer, I ended up going through a divorce, uh, much more painful and emotional than I ever would have expected. Um, I left my home in Seattle and moved down to Southern California. Um, I stayed with my corporate uh, career for, for a few years after that, but literally um, it felt like my entire life was falling apart. And I have a very dear friend who's also a channel. Her name is Judy Callie, an incredible woman. And, and I heard her say one time, when, uh, when it feels like your entire life is falling apart, just let it, because it's not falling apart, it's falling into place. But I was used to making everything happen on my own. And so although my ultimate sort of question back to source was always um, this, when with God all things are possible, I wanted to know that. I wanted to know that for sure. But I didn't want to give up everything that I had in order to know that. So it was like this internal struggle um, as my whole life was changing, the life that I knew. And as that life kind of moved away, um, this whole new life came in. Everything changed where I lived, my relationships, my health, and my work. Um, and it was that journey that really brought me to um, exploring what it means to be a spiritual teacher, exploring whether I wanted to do that or not. I think anytime you have a desire, and, and the council talks a lot about desire, anytime you have a new desire, it's going to call your greatest fears to the surface. Anything that still says you're limited, or you're not good enough, or who are you to want that, right? It sort of calls it to the light. And it's an opportunity to release it and let it go. And as you do, you know, this desire flows to you and is supposed to flow to you in the most easy, effortless way when we stay present and just continue to ask what's the next perfect step. And so um, I started receiving uh, my brother, as we talked about, that communication and knowing that something more was there. And then I started waking up in the middle of the night. And this was still when I was in my corporate world. And this energy was flowing through me. It was the most loving, joyful, electric, alive energy. And I would just grab a piece of paper and I would write for like two hours. And I would wake up the next morning and I would read it. And it was this incredible wisdom. It was the answers to all the questions that I had. And I knew it was coming through me. I had an absolute awareness that it was truth, that I was remembering something. Um, 
but I didn't, I didn't want to be weird. <laughs> I didn't want to be woo woo. I didn't really talk about it. I didn't really share it with people. And, um, and I went through that for a couple of years and then I had an experience, um, through sort of a hypnosis technique where the council came through and they came through really strong and really fast. And, um, the, the woman that was asking questions, um, sat and asked them questions for about an hour and a half and it was all recorded. And at the end of it, I had a sense of awareness of it. Um, and, but it was really hard to hold the energy in my body. My voice was really weird. And, uh, and again, I was just like, okay, like we are not ever telling anybody about this. Right. And, um, and as it just progressed, I, I, the wisdom was so profound. And as I was, I was, taking the recordings and I was transcribing them and I was reading them and I was using the wisdom, my life was changing. My life was absolutely changing. Everything as I knew it, I was um, remembering how it was supposed to be. And so people started noticing this and I started sharing the wisdom with people and then people started wanting to talk to the, at the time it was really like the voice. I called it the voice because my voice at the time was so different. Um, uh, when I was in a channeled state and other people started having these profound experiences with changing their lives through using the wisdom and the teachings and being in the vibration of it. And it just became choiceless. And I had to work through my two biggest fears, which were, um, that, that I would no longer be normal. You know, the, the first time someone heard I was a channeler or saw it, you know, you can never really go back from that, right? And just be normal again. So it's really a, a leap of faith you sort of take. And my other fear was that, um, that I would lose the love of my, my dad specifically and my Christian family and some of my very dear Christian friends. And I had to work through that fear and, and none of my fears, neither of my fears ever happened. I was just going to ask you that actually, yeah. How have your Christian family taken this yeah. new you? Yeah. So, um, I'm going to, I'm going to put the responsibility completely on myself because there was a time in my life where I, I was very triggered. If someone would say, Jesus Christ is your savior, you're going to hell. I would want to fight with them and argue with them. I was so, I would have this visceral response and I'd either get really angry or start crying. And through following the council's teachings, I realized that essentially they were saying the same thing that, and, and it was just their interpretation of something that I could come to the same place with truth. Maybe I would use different words. Um, and I certainly, um, allow each person to believe what they believe now, but what I, what was my responsibility is that I had to get to a place where even if they didn't understand that it was okay. And that's exactly the experience I had uh, with my dad is he just said, you know, I don't understand. I just don't understand it. Why can't you use your normal voice? Right? And I said, dad, I couldn't talk like that for two hours. If I tried, I don't know these things. I couldn't speak like that. They don't say, um, they don't say, you know, and I said, I couldn't make it up if I tried, but I said, I believe this is my calling. I know this is my calling. And he said, um, you know, it's all right. I, I love you no matter what, you know, I, I don't understand, but I support you and whatever you need to do. And, um, and now, you know, after it's been a little time, you know, he does ask questions about it. But when I wasn't sort of in resistance to having him needing him to understand and approve of it in order for it to be okay for me, then I could just be in this really open, loving space of whatever he felt about it. But that's the same for friends as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. And, and mom, and, and uh, my mom actually listens to the council. <laughs> um, so, cool. <laughs> so, um, it was my mother's sister who was very into spirituality when I was young. Um, so yes, my mom yes, has Sorry, been yes, to some yes. channels. Um, yes. <laughs> I, I don't know, honestly, what she believes about it. She's a really smart woman. She just sort of takes it all in and, uh, you know, will she ever have, uh, the interest in awakening at a particular level or not? I don't know. So let's cap into some quick, quick fire yeah. in between us then, because, because this, this is a, a lot to pack in here. 
um, and we're going to miss some bits out, so, so that's okay, but we're trying to get the most, the most important bits in. And your story is absolutely fascinating and inspiring as well, don't think it's not. So the council, mm-hmm. uh, the council of what, who are they? So um, they are a group of non-physical beings, but I also believe it's the higher selves of those of us that are in physical, that are present in the conversation that we're having, and they come forth at a higher level consciousness with an expanded awareness, a, a broader perspective on this human experience to help us remember who we are, why we're here, what we intended when we chose this life experience, so that we can live more purposefully, joyfully, um, with greater peace, knowing that perfect health is possible for us, that infinite supply is always here for us, so that this life experience can be everything that we intended it to be when we chose these life experiences. So um, I don't uh, question it from a level of um, specifics of whether they're from a particular realm or any of that. It's just, it, it is this feeling of a broader collective of the most loving energy, uh, highest wisdom in that moment that you most need to hear and um, it, it's just a really beautiful, beautiful experience. So for inspiration for people that are getting into this, because it'll be channelers or those that are getting into channeling, watching this interview right now and in the future, in the moment, shall we say, <laughs> yes. right? there is no future. Um, you've made this into a full-time business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Others may have struggled with what you've mm-hmm. done. What makes you different? Uh, struggled in what way? Struggled to be successful? to be successful with this work, yes. Yeah, so I think there's sort of this thing that we carry in our mass consciousness, which is this, um, the, the sort of snake oil uh, salesperson sort of thing, that, that um, selling anything spiritual, making money with anything spiritual, is somehow out of integrity. It's easier for a camel to get you know, through the eye of the needle, right, than a, than a rich man to get to heaven. It's sort of that... Um, that belief that we have and so it really comes down to your value and valuing yourself and the work that you do or the work that comes through you and and knowing Uh, uh, that it's it's valuable and being able to exchange it so we have all forms of resources right money is an energy it's a resource and so when you can just see it that way, it is, it is a form of exchange and as a form of resources that you need. We, we need all sorts of resources. And so understanding that for people who, who believe so powerfully in the work that comes through them, right? Knowing that in order to get your message out to as many people as possible, you're gonna need a lot of resources. You're gonna need the technology, you're going to need the platform, you're going to need people, you're gonna need all these things. and At this point in time, we have money as a a form of currency that we trade for the things that we want. And so when we change our relationship with money, that it's Mm. just an energy. Mm. We all know how important energy is, right? Mm. We Mm. can receive it and allow it. And and I'm certainly not going to say that it was an easy process. I went from collecting a paycheck with benefits, with stock options, um, making a very, very lucrative corporate salary to... um, that, that was my safety, my security. It defined me, my success, um, oh, to, yes, yes. to transitioning into, and I had had a lot of experience with uh, small business and starting businesses and entrepreneurial, but it's, it's different when it's your own business, right? Um, the other thing I would say to people is you have to be part of self-love. The council talks so much about the, the seven steps to realizing your own love of self and says, that that is the most important achievement in the human experience because all else comes from there. Your connection to source, your connection to infinite supply, having harmonious relationships, being able to communicate transparently and speak your truth, it Mm. all comes back to self-love. And so part of self-love, one of the steps of self-love is allowing people to help you, asking for help. And so sometimes we have to ask for help. We can't do it all on our own. You know, I I have a a particular gift, but we all have gifts, right? So when we put them all together, we have more. And so sometimes it's a matter of um, 
this old belief that's in our psyche around making money on anything spiritual. Um, but if you are changing people's lives, you are making a difference in people's lives, you're helping them achieve greater health, well-being, improving their relationships. Um, you know, so many people I've guided through relationship issues, you know, with the council, business issues, making better business decisions, um, you know, health things. When you see the value that this work has in people's lives, it's truly priceless. Thank you so much for what you've just shared there as well. That's priceless. It, it all is, yeah. Um, and the transparency as well, as well, that's really important. Mm -hmm. So some of the key teachings of here in, in, with your work is, would you say oneness and love? Yes, but here's what I want to explain about oneness because I think it's really important. There's a step before this. When we use the word oneness, sometimes people get a little stuck. Okay, so I, the council refers to God or source often as all that is. Right, and so we are connected to all that is. That is um, the consciousness of oneness. But I think there's a step before that, which is oneness between you, the personality you, and the higher self, soul you. Coming into oneness with that, the, the harmonious relationship between you and you is, is oneness. And then your connection to source, all that is, unity consciousness, uh, oneness, it comes from there really naturally. So absolutely the teachings would be about oneness. Um, the world around us is a reflection of the world that exists within us. So when you find all the places in yourself that are not of love, that are not of peace, that keep you from joy, when you find those things within you, and you let them come to the surface and you heal them and let them go, those things no longer are reflected back to you in the world around you. Now, people would say, uh, but there's starving children in Africa. There's people suffering everywhere. There's animal suffering, all of the suffering, right? <sighs> and then I just take a deep breath because I understand, but you can't fix it from that level. And we cause our own suffering when we think we know another soul's journey. We don't know why these souls are here. We don't know what another soul's journey is. And we always cause our own suffering when we think someone else's life should be different or we think someone should have a different experience. And so when you can start allowing that in your life, you, you can really do this work of creating a world around you that is harmonious, that is loving, that is peaceful. You can't put the oxygen mask on someone else unless yeah. you put yours on first. Exactly. But when does that point where you start helping someone else kick in? Yeah, I think it's when you're called. But here's a part of it too. You, we want to push against what we don't want. We want to protest against anti-war, right? We want to protest against oil, right? The more right, you're just you know, creating right, yeah. more and more momentum for these things you push against, right? So whatever you're focused on, whatever focus you're focusing your attention on, you're getting more of that. Even if you're trying to raise awareness for it. So let me give you an example. Um, something that's really near and dear to my heart. I love animals. Um, and so I want all animals to be treated kindly and humanely. Um, I'm not a strict vegan or vegetarian. Um, the council shares much wisdom about uh, our food supplies, but me going and um, saying to someone that's eating pork, for example, you shouldn't eat that, right? And I start pushing at them, stop doing that, stop doing that, stop, stop doing all this stuff, right? You should change, right? They're just going to resist me, right? But if you, if you, we know that there's there's places that don't treat factory farming, that don't treat animals kindly. You, you have to be um, aware on some level. Your, your, your desire will bring information to you. But then instead of pushing against what you think is wrong, shine your light on what you want more of. Farmers that treat animals humanely, kindly, the, the conscious farmer, the, the, the conscious 
food choices. Shine your light on the things that you want more of. That's the power we all have. We are limiting ourselves when we're fighting against another's choice. We have free will. We are a planet of free will. Not all places have free will, but we can't choose for another. And anytime we do, we, we put ourselves in a form of bondage. Now that makes a lot of sense. And thank you so, so much for sharing it from that perspective as well. So how many years have you been doing this work for now? Just to, uh, if there was uh, about five years. Five yeah. years. And how have you built up yourself as a channel then? Is that mainly through the online platforms? Yeah. So, you know, first off, I don't think anybody ever makes it alone in this type of endeavor or any endeavor. Um, the right people came into my life at the right time to help me and to guide me through different parts of the process and get me to the next step. Um, you know, some of those people are still in my life and some of them came in and, you know, and, and we get guided in different directions. And so um, it was a series of things that I could have never orchestrated up on my own. And, you know, we can never connect the dots looking forward, but when we look back, we see how things were so divinely orchestrated for us all the time. And so to, um, for me, I started by doing calls and I did free calls, just speaking the wisdom of the council. Um, I was offering, uh, I was doing private sessions with people. That's really how it started. Um, you know, but that was all fairly local, word of mouth, people that had done a session with the council um, and they would come back or they would refer me, but it was still fairly geographically limited. And so then I started doing calls on a free platform where I just got on and you know, brought forth the messages of the council and that began to grow and grow and grow and started a newsletter email list, right, where people could follow it. Then I started creating webinar courses um, on a particular subject, like one of um, them is manifesting your soul's desires. Another one is realizing your perfect health. Channeled courses. Yeah, yeah so yeah, channeled yeah, courses. Yeah, yeah. And um, then I had this, you know, incredible opportunity where I, I met people that had shows that offered different people's products and spiritual work and spiritual teaching. And so that helped me expand my audience. Um, and then I um, connected with someone who had a, a global audience of about a million people. And I went on his show. Um, that was the Beyond the Ordinary show that I mentioned. And um, all of a sudden I had people in 21 different countries that were doing sessions with the council. And it just grew and grew and grew from there. And, you know, it's always one step at a time, right? If in this moment, you manifested everything that you want. Tomorrow, you'd have a new desire. We are always expanding. And so you don't ever really get there. It's just this continual expansion of the work. Um, I was guided to start a master's class program with this creating a global community of people that were living the teachings and practicing them in their lives, applying the council's wisdom. And it's created this incredible community. And so. There's um, lots of different ways that the work has expanded. Um, I, I work with clients as well on a consultative basis where it's a combination of people that work with the council and work with me on their business piece. And um, many of them are channels. Many of them you know, have this connection now with their higher self that they're really living in alignment and tuned into their soul. And then they say, what do I do with it? And the council says, what do you want to do with it? Thank you. Well, what's the difference between what you do and what a medium does then? Uh, so be as far as like a channel. Um, so the council brings forth processes, procedures, uh, wisdom, teachings. Uh, they'll work with someone on a particular belief and, and releasing that belief. Um, the, a lot of times people come where they've gone through a near death experience or they're going through a major life transformation. Um, but the council doesn't particularly uh, bring forth a specific entity. So if uh, you had a, if your mother passed away, I don't necessarily channel your mother, right? The, the council, she may be made up, you know, part of, she may be included in the council collective. Um, but I don't consider myself a psychic and I don't consider myself a a medium like someone that um, contacts a specific person on the other side. Yeah, because in this work sometimes it's like, show me the proof. Yeah. There's no validation. Tommy was buried with that marvel in his pocket. You can't, you're not telling me that. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a different type of energy. It's a different yeah. type of, 
it's a different type of soul evolution that comes yeah. through. And there's such a better validation. The validation is who you become. After the, the After session. After you, you know, first off what you feel. The, during a session, the council often says that um, while our words are important, this is a vibrational experience. And so it's really about getting you to the vibration of the truth of who you are. So you have this feeling of who you are outside of this limited you, this fear that you've picked up and learned, this um, shame that you've picked up and learned, this guilt, right? It's who is the you beyond all of that, mm. right? When you go beyond what's there and having mm. an experience of that, yeah. you can never go back. Yeah. And then when you start living the wisdom and you see your life change, maybe you don't have arguments in your life anymore. Your, your relationships, I went from um, a relationship where, you know, there, there was always kind of this, you know, arguing and pushing and blah, blah, to after living the council's wisdom, being in a relationship and all relationships in my life that are very harmonious. There's really nothing to argue about when you're living um, in alignment with your truth. I know and some people say, well, if you're not arguing with your partner, then how are you growing? I'm like, I don't really want a relationship of continuous argument. Right. I just don't see that. But that, if that's your truth, mate, yeah. that's fine. It's not, yeah. not mine. Yeah, and to each yeah. their own, right? Yeah. Right. So, right. Um, you know, I'm, I'm all for whatever work people are particularly guided to. Um, you know, I, I think the thing about this work that is so amazing to me is just the absolute love that comes through. Some people... Um, have never experienced unconditional love in this life. And to have the council sees everyone as the absolute perfection that they are. No matter what you have ever done or what you think you have done or who you think you are or aren't, they just see you as whole and worthy and so loved. And some people, it's the first time they've ever had that experience in their life. Well, 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 well. Your website is? SarahLandon.com. S-A-R-A and then L-A-N-D-O-N.com. Well, Sarah, just thank you so, so much for joining us today. Thank you. It is such a pleasure, Kevin. And it's just, I believe so strongly in what you're doing, bringing this awareness to the world as we talked about. I really do think we're stepping into the next evolution of spiritual mastery and consciousness and living at a higher level. And I think bringing this information into the mainstream um, so it can be talked about. People do not have to um, think they're strange or weird and, and that there's something wrong with them, but they can come to a place where they understand that this is really normal. If I can just exchange, uh, share two things. One of the fascinating things from this experience is to talk to people all over the world that are channeling um, information like clients that come and they share things that they have received and the information is almost always similar. Almost uses the same words, um, uses the same analogies a lot of times and you begin to see that this is not an accident. Uh, it, it's, there's something more going on here. and. Um, you know, the second piece of it is just how much your life opens up when you start to live this way and you come together with others that are also living this way. It's really incredible. And, and for anybody out there, you know, you're never alone. You're not alone in this. You, you never could be if you knew who was with you always guiding you. It's funny, yesterday I had the most profound message that came to me uh, of anything, and it came from me. And I don't know why I couldn't have got this message in a channeled mode when I normally channel. And I'm not channeled for a long time, mm -hmm. right? And, but then the lady that put me under regression said, you know, I think you were channeling there. Yeah. Under the regression, it was a form of going under and, 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 and channeling. And what came through was that um, if you could imagine a canvas, an infinite canvas of, of just <laughs> the void, yeah? yeah? And in that canvas is the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest speck of light. Mm. And in that speck of light, it was like a funnel like that. And there was layers upon layers upon layers upon layers upon layers. And the allness that was, this 
undescribable allness, this mm. undescribable void that was aware, gave its life for us so that we could restart it at some point. Yeah. It wants us to restart it. Yeah. It gave itself to us so that mm. um, we could have this experience, but it's not there anymore, it's mm -hmm. gone. Mm -hmm. It's now contained within the spark. Mm -hmm. And it's an experiment of no one knows what's going to happen when it does get switched back yeah. on. Is it going to be more aware than what it was? Is it, is it just going to have a load of good movies to watch, yeah. you know, at the end of yeah. it all? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I never, ever, ever, ever thought of it that way before, that it gave itself for us. It's beautiful. And it was like, is that true? But it feels such a good thing that I've imagined if it's not. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's you know, and, it, and I, then, then what came through was that those that channel source, they're just channeling, it's just an aspect. There is, mm -hmm. in, in this spark, there is the, all the multidimensional mm -hmm. aspects, the gods beyond, gods beyond gods. And they're all one in a sense, but they, yeah. there's even subdividance of God, yeah. but it isn't the fullness, none of this is the fullness of that which is beyond the spark. Yes. And I, yes. You know, it's like... Do I want that to be true? Uh, does it help anyone? It, I think it helped me in the moment yeah. yesterday when it came through. Yeah, and I, and I think um, your feeling that you have, right, that you experienced what you felt, it, it can't be put into words. Anytime we try to label this stuff or explain these experiences, you limit it mm. in the moment you try to explain it. What was interesting as well was the channels were the aspects that have woken up mm -hmm. that will eventually move on to mm -hmm. to to help awaken the all that is yeah. and the, it's like the matrix there's those that are coming in to try to awaken itself in this subdivided portion that we are right now yeah but with free will yeah and e even what this is was an illusion in the first mm -hmm. place mm -hmm. It's like these guys that you're bringing through. Maybe I should save this for the channel section, actually, right? All right. Um, I don't know why I'm bringing this up right now. It was just so profound yesterday when it came through. And it's like, oh, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever yeah. that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I just wanted to share that with yeah. you. I don't know why. You know, I had a, a, an interesting experience um, once where I was, I was writing and, and I was channeled. And it, and it said that, you know, first you're here to purify your soul of this life in all lifetimes. And then to practice impeccable creative expression dedicated to the highest evolution of all souls. It was actually to master. Uh, master impeccable creative expression dedicated to the highest evolution of all souls. And it said, when you leave this life, you will go beyond the light to the source. Right? That there's this understanding that at some point, you know, the council says the guides, the angels, the archangels, they're here for us. Because what we're doing in this human experience is the best show that's going on anywhere. That this is the place to be right now. And that they're all here to hold vibration to us, for us, to guide us so that we don't forget what we intended, so that we don't lose our vibrations, right? They're here for us. And what I got from that, that channeled message was that, you know, at some point we also can choose to become the light. But while we're here, just enjoy every moment of everything mm, that this mm, world has to offer. So important. Because we, we are here in these human bodies with a brain that perceives through our senses what you see, what you taste, what you touch, what you smell. What you hear? What am I forgetting? Um, and that's, we begin to rely on that more than the feeling mechanism of us, the non-physical spirit soul within us that is always guiding us by the way that we feel. So we become so much more tuned in to our senses. But the beautiful thing of that is, and the council has said this, and it just blew my mind when they said it, the rose would not have a beautiful fragrance without you here to smell it. The sun 
cannot shine on your face and you can't feel that warmth on your skin without you here to feel the sunshine. What would any of this be without us here experiencing it? So our life is meant to be good. It's meant to be fun. We're supposed to find as many ways as possible to experience joy as we're exploring what we want to create in this life experience. Even if we've chosen certain situations that would be testing. Yes, because, so the council says there's no one outside of you testing you. You we, are we testing you. We didn't set ourselves you. any kind of little, little challenges Did on the way? Did we test ourselves? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Do we set those before we came here? Oh, that's such a good question. Um, Some of them? Not the way that we think about it. No, okay. It's not because you have free will. Right? And so, so I'll answer it this way. The Again, an, an evolution of the word. Yeah. 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 So the council says that, so people will come and say, what am I going to be doing a year from now? Right? Okay. And they said, oh, okay, we'll tell you. So you let us know exactly what you're going to be doing and exactly where you're going to be on January 8th, 2019. Tell us exactly where you're going to be and exactly what you'll be doing and we'll tell you you know, what, what's going to, your prophecy or whatever. And the person says, well, I don't know, right? And, and so the council kind of laughs and says, it's the same with source. You're on a planet of free will. Everybody has free will. So in the present moment, there is the shortest path to exactly what you want. But five minutes from now, the shortest, easiest, most effortless path is different because of everybody's choices and free will. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so... Mm -hmm. Source can use anyone and anything because we're all one and we're all one with all that is. Anything is fair game when it's, when it's in a state of willingness to be used in your highest and best good or to um, bring to you what it is that you desire. And that's why. I had asked this question many times. I had read a book on you know, the, the now moment and I thought this is so not exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I want to live in the now moment. It doesn't sound that sexy and fun, right? So I asked the council, like, why the what now moment? That is not that fun, right? And they said, well, you know, all of your power is in the now moment. So if you're feeling guilt or regret or anger, you're living in the past. You have no power in the past. And if you're stressed and anxious and worried, you're living in the future. You have no power in the future. All of your power is in this now moment. And if you're present and you're open and you're in alignment and you're in this good feeling place, the source can deliver you in that moment exactly what you want. And so do we have challenges? Do we have lessons? Do we have these things? Yes. Um, are some of them destined? I, uh, my other favorite story about this is actually Wayne Dyer, who was a huge, huge, huge um, inspiration to me. And he said, you know, what if the story kind of goes like this? What if I was sitting there with God and I said, you know, I want to I wanna go down and, and experience a life on earth. And God said, okay, well, what do you, you want to give? What do you want to teach? What do you want to be about when you go there? And he said, well, I really want to teach self-reliance. I want to teach people, people that this power within them, if they rely on that instead of their limitation, that anything is possible for them. And if you know the story of Wayne Dyer, he grew up in an orphanage. And so, so he, Wayne Dyer kind of laughed and said, so after I told God that I wanted to teach self-reliance and bring self-reliance, God said, well, we better get your little butt in an orphanage, right? So uh, I think that we come here with a quest to answer sort of a question that drives our life. And sometimes that question changes. And if you think about it that way, you're here on a quest. You're here on a grand adventure. You're not here to right some wrong from the past. You're, you're not here to pay a karmic debt. You're not here to save the broken world. You're here on a quest to answer a question. And answering of that question is what you're constantly seeking and exploring and drawing to you. I wonder what question Hitler was ask, answering. I, I think it was power. It was all about power. The same with Trump today? Yes, power. Mm. Right? It, no, 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 what was right he, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so we've, we've all explored 
lower vibrations of trying to control other people. We, I, I won't speak for everybody, but I'll, I'll just say, I, I think it's pretty safe to say, in some way or another, we've all explored controlling someone else and being controlled by someone else and what that feels like. Feeling powerless and then making another person feel powerless, right? We don't do that from a conscious state. Once we're conscious, we, we don't need another's power, right? And there was also lots of other people that were exploring power that were, were also part of that manifestation. The hard thing about um, all of that is sort of answered in what the council explains is the isness. <laughs> and if you in your life can let the isness be your default, mm -hmm. instead of anger or fear or suffering or pushing against, just yes. it is what it is. And if you can even say that, it just neutralizes things. It just is what it is. You stop all resistance, you stop all pushing. It just is what it is. If you can be in the isness, you can even feel the power of the isness. The isness is the now moment. The isness is your connection to source. Your isness is this innate love that just flows through you. It's just the state of isness. And so the miracles, the magic, the amazing things enter from that state of isness. <laughs> Well, we're going to have to attempt to, 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 to uh, end this on that note, right? Um, so many, we could go on, on, on yeah. and on and on, right? And this is the beautiful part of this conversation. So I just want to say thank you for that extra thank bit you. there. And uh, until next time, until, until our paths cross time. again, thank which you. I'm sure they will. Thank I'm you very so much. I'm grateful. Thank you, Kevin. so pleased to have the opportunity to speak with you on this fine day. Our friend, how are you? I'm very well, thank you very much. Very well indeed. And we tell you that while our words are important, this is a vibrational experience of remembering the truth of who you really are and why you are here and what you intended when you chose this life experience because we assure you your life experience was meant to be very good for you and when it is not you have forgotten the truth of who you are and why you are here you are here for the expansion of your soul and while you are perfect you are always expanding and becoming more and so we say that you are everything you wish to be. You already are. You are everything you wish to be. You already are. But you are here for the expansion of your soul, knowing that even through the perfection, wholeness, worthiness, completeness that is you, you are always becoming more and everything that happens in your life experience. Life is not happening to you. Life is happening for you. And everything that happens serves in the expansion of your soul because all experiences provide you with data and information which helps bring forth clarity about what you really, really want. That data, that information leads to your expansion. And so when you can recognize that all things, that life is happening for you, your life begins to unfold in the most magnificent ways. You are also here as the expression of source. You are here to express all that you are in human form. 
You are an aspect of the divine. You are the extension of source in the world. You are that which you call God. You are, you're that powerful. You're that worthy. You're that important. And you are here to express that love of God, that light of God in the world. Joy does not exist in the world without you bringing it forth. The love that you want for your world comes through you. You are the physical expression of the divine. And then you are here to manifest that which you want in physical form. You are light, you are energy, you are vibration. The truth of who you are is the brightest, whitest, most beautiful light, this vibration that is you, and you come forth into the density of the physical experience to change form from, from your imagination into the physical world. All things were first imagined in the imagination, and through focus and intention, these things came forth in physical form. You are an alchemist of the light. You are converting higher and lower light vibrations. And when you focus on your attention, either wanted or unwanted, for any extended period of time, you begin to move thought into form and manifest in the physical. You're here as creators. You're here to create. But most of you are creating what you do not want because you're focused on what you do not want because you learn to be this limited part of you instead of remembering the truth of who you are. And you are here to explore all that life has to offer for you. We give you this example. Your life experience is like the grandest, most wonderful buffet you have ever been to. Imagine going to the city of Las Vegas, to the most wonderful buffet in, in, that you could ever imagine. Every food in the entire world anything that you wanted to taste was there. But you went and noticed that they had the most awful food that you dislike. Maybe it's creamed spinach or maybe it's Brussels sprouts. And, and you went over to it and you got a scoop of it and you put it on your plate and you took a bite of it and said, oh, this is awful. And then you went back and you got a bigger scoop and you took it back to your table and started talking to your friends about the awful taste you just had. And, and you said, here, you should try it and you should try it. It's so awful. Take a bite. And your friend said, I, I, I believe you. It's awful. We don't want a bite. And then you talked about it, not just at the table, but for the next 10 years. Instead of going to the buffet and trying things, you have, you have choices. You have a variety of life. This life is giving you an opportunity to choose what you really want. And so if you take a bite of something in life and you do not like it, then, then go find something you do like. Take a bite of that. Start talking about that. Start sharing that. Start focusing on that. And you'll get more and more and more of that. It seems quite silly to us why you would take a bite of something you do not like and then continue talking about it for the next 20 years when you have the whole buffet of life here for your choosing. It all comes back to understanding how worthy and important you are. It all comes back to the love of self. And this is not the selfish sort of love. It's love of self, understanding that you cannot give to another what you do not have. You cannot give from lack. You give from your fullness. Let your fullness inspire your life. Let your fullness inspire your desires. Choose from your place of wholeness, remembering the truth of who you are. There is so much here for you. There is so much here for you. And it's all available to you. And the easiest way for it all to come into you is to get into the vibration of joy. We say to you, the most important thing you can be doing is finding as many ways as possible to experience joy in your life as you choose consciously what you want to explore next and find as many ways to experience joy 
in this incredible life experience which is your choosing. Life is meant to be good, it is meant to be fun, and when it is not, you are thinking a thought that is something other than your truth. Truth will always come to you as a feeling. You are a feeling being, and your feelings are, are your guidance system here. You are not afraid to come forth knowing all of the contrast that was here in this human experience because you knew that your feelings would guide you. But you have learned to trust what you see, the limited part of you that it can be perceived by your brain through your senses. You've, you've learned to trust what you see over what you feel. You've learned to trust what you hear over what you feel. Your power is in feeling, and if you want to change anything in your life, you must understand this. Anything, no matter what it is, your health, your relationship, your, your relationship with money, your, your level of abundance, you must first change the thoughts that you are thinking. You must change the thoughts that you are thinking. You change your thoughts through your conscious awareness of your thoughts, but your thoughts affect your emotions. Your emotions affect the way that you feel. The way that you feel affects your vibration. The vibration you are in is what is attracting your life experience to you. So if you notice that things are coming to you and, and the world is, is, is feeling quite hostile and your relationships aren't very good, and you, if you notice it at the experience level, you can still go back to your thoughts and start creating a new experience. If you notice it at the feeling level that you do not feel very good, then the thoughts you're thinking must not be in alignment to the truth of who you are. So go back to the thoughts that you're thinking. We'll give you our most powerful affirmation. The highest words that you can say to yourself to change any situation. Whether you feel like you don't have enough time here on this earth experience, you don't have enough money, you don't have the resources you need for what you want. This one affirmation will begin to change everything for you. If you can become conscious of your thoughts, catch them, and begin to think a new thought, you will reprogram your brain to look for a new experience. So the affirmation is this. Galore, galore, I have everything I need and more. Galore, galore, I have everything I need and more. <clears throat> galore, galore, I have everything I need and more. And at first, your brain might say, well, that's not true. <clears throat> I need money for next month and it's not here. And we say, but right now, in this moment, do you have everything you need and more? Right now, in this moment, you might not have what you need for tomorrow or a week from now or a year from now or when you ret retire. But right now, in this moment, you do have everything you need and more. And if you will catch yourself anytime you're in fear, anytime you're stressed or worried or anxious, and say, galore, galore, I have everything I need and more. Say it over and over again until you feel it and you know it. And watch your life change as more and more and more begins to show up for you when you recognize all that you have. None of you are victims. You could not ever be. You might have explored being powerless. You might have explored not having a voice. You might have explored being sick and tired until you were sick and tired of being sick and tired. You might have explored being powerless until you decided that, that there's a truth within you that knows that, that you are limitless, unlimited, that you are, the, are, are as powerful as anything outside of you that you have ever given your power to. You are that which you call God. No one and nothing can ever take your power without your agreement to it. And some of you have been afraid of your power, so you say, here, you take it, you take it. I, I don't know what to do with this, and it will never work for them. Your power is for you. Allow your power to be known by you. And no matter what happens, there are three things that no one and nothing can ever take away from you. 
if you are in a relationship and and it's awful if you are in a living situation and you 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 don't like it if you're in a job that you don't like anything in your life experience there are three things that you can do to begin changing your life right now and no one and nothing can ever take these things away from you the first one is your appreciation and we want to explain what appreciation is appreciation is a higher vibration than even gratitude because it is an action appreciation is an action it is the enjoyment of the good the enjoyment of the good in your life the enjoyment of the good in the world the enjoyment of the good in others the enjoyment of the good in you nothing can ever take away in this moment your opportunity your right your choice to enjoy the good that is here there is so much good here for you and some will say but i'm sick my back hurts and 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 i i cannot move around because my back hurts and we say but think of all the millions of other things in your body that are working well focus on enjoying the good things in your body your lungs are working your heart is beating you can see you can hear you can touch you can hear someone say i love you you can take a deep breath and breathe in the fresh air your feet work your toes work your hands work your brain works when's the last time you appreciated your incredible brain you have an endocrine system and a respiratory system and a reproductive system all working millions of things in your body are working and are there for you to appreciate it is also true about your finances your relationships even if one person in your life is 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 frustrating you or triggering you there are billions of other people that you can appreciate the good in and and the all things start with love that person who triggers you could not even trigger you if the basis of of what you felt for them was not love there is only love there's always something to appreciate and the second thing that no one and nothing can ever take from you is your vibration someone can walk up and kick you in the toe and you decide whether you're going to choose to explore anger and resentment and blame or if you're going to hold your vibration of joy and love and peace no one can ever take your vibration because it's the truth of who you are your vibration is is the thing that's attracting your life experience to you so you can be sitting in the midst of chaos and you can feel for your vibration you can feel for your vibration you can close your eyes and take a deep breath and reach for a higher vibration and the third thing and the most fun of them all the third thing that no one and nothing can ever take from you is your imagination your imagination is where you create new ideas new realities new concepts new experiences new things to explore it all starts in your imagination and you're all exploring imagination all day long which you're usually imagining the worst imagining what it would be like to be in those awful experiences that you're not even in and your imagination is what's putting you there so if you take that imagination and you start focusing it on love and joy and good and truth and wisdom and consciousness and oneness and exploring all that is here for you you will begin to see those things that you hold in your imagination come forth in your physical experience when you don't feel very passionate about your life when you don't feel very excited is because you're you're not consciously creating what you want to explore next but you've got to let it unfold and so we'll give you three steps in addition to the three things that no one and nothing can ever take from you three steps to to living a a happier life number 1 no matter what is ever going on in your life whether whether you are you are sitting across from someone who is suffering whether you are suffering whether there's suffering going on in the world things you don't like your health isn't what you want it to be right now 
if you will accept just the way it is right now. Just accept just the way it is right now. You will stop all of the resistance in this moment that's keeping the very thing that you want from you. If you will accept just the way it is, it is what it is. The instant manifestation of accepting just the way it is right now is peace. If you will accept just the way it is, you will instantly experience peace, peace in your life. And what exists within you is, is, is what is being reflected back to you in the world around you. You will accept just the way it is. The instant manifestation will be peace. And then if you will take the step of trusting, trust that there is a divine plan for your life. Trust that source hears you. Trust that your soul is out ahead of you orchestrating things on your behalf in your highest and best good finding the easiest, most effortless path to guide you to and to guide things to you. Trust that you matter. Trust that your life matters. Trust that you are here. You have a role. You have a purpose. And it's so important. And that nothing can ever keep you from that purpose. Trust, trust, trust that the dots will all connect. You're on the right path. There's a power available to you at all times that will guide you step by step by step. And when you do, you will have an instant manifestation of all the love that is here for you. The love that is beyond any sort of definition of your human love. The love that is, is the love of the divine of God. When you trust in the divine plan for your life, you trust that there's some higher power that's aware of you, you begin to invite in the love that creates worlds, the love that makes the impossible possible, the love that can do all things. You begin to have an instant manifestation of that love in your life. And you begin to bring forth that love in the world. And then, if you will allow, allow it to unfold in the most easiest, effortless, harmonious way. Allow it to unfold. And the instant manifestation of allowing, getting into the flow of life and letting yourself be guided, living at a state of grace, allowing the miracles to unfold for you because you're in the vibration of those miracles, the instant manifestation of your li- in your life will be joy. If you will allow the instant manifestation will be joy. And you can get yourself into a state of allowing by doing the things that bring you joy. We say, what can you do right now that will bring you joy? Go do that. There is nothing more important because if you're going to try to force an effort and try to make something happen with your logical mind from your limited viewpoint, you're always going to get a a more limited answer. Your result will always be limited. If you get into the vibration of joy, Before you do anything, the inspired idea will come, the inspired action, divine right time, the divine right way. It'll be so much better than you could ever figure out on your own. But you must be in the vibration of joy. These are all things that you can do in your life today to begin to change your life and live in alignment to the truth of who you are, which is so much more than you could ever put into words. It is a feeling. It is a knowing. It is a knowing within you that there is so much more possible for you, so much more to you than what you have learned. And some ask us, well, I've I've spent this whole life. I've learned all these limitations. I've picked up all these limiting beliefs. I've learned to force an effort. I've learned to try to figure it out on my own. I've learned to be logical. And we say, there's a better way. There's an easier way. And you say, show me the easier way. And, and we say, the easier way is to get into flow with life and let it to unfold easily, effortlessly, harmonious. But if you think about your, your life experience, here's a perfect example. If you rode a bike and that was the way that you got to where you wanted to go, was riding a bike, 
and you learned how to ride a bike, you got really good at riding a bike, you've been riding a bike for 20 years or 30 years or 50 years or 60 years to get where you wanted to go in life, if all of a sudden someone says, here's a car, it'll get you there much faster, much easier, you won't get tired, you won't get worn out, here's a much faster, easier way. You don't have to unlearn how to ride a bike in order to drive a car. You don't have to go into all your limiting beliefs and unlearn them and figure out where you got them and give them back and figure out what life they're from and figure out who, who's, which one of your parents is responsible for this or your teachers. No, you don't have to unlearn how to ride a bike. You've just got to drive the car. You've just got to, to, to practice these things that we're saying. This is the easy, effortless way to get into flow. It is a vibration that you reach for. It is the vibration of joy where your life unfolds. You get in the vibration of peace, of joy, of love. And all things unfold. Your life will become so much more what you intended it to be. You are everything you wish to be. You already are. But in your knowing, you consciously, intentionally become more and more and more. That is the expansion of your soul. So, our friend, do you have any questions for us? Oh, where can I start? Um, well, you've answered a lot of the questions that I maybe thought I had. <laughs> um, and you've gone diving deep into the law of... Uh, the laws there as well. Um, bear with me. Can we have some fun with you about this law of attraction that you are you are about to mention there? Sure. So so here's where we would like to take you next in the understanding of the law of attraction, if if you want to call it that. So. Many of you understand vibration. You understand that, that different emotions have, have different vibrations to them. And some of you would say to us that, that the heaviest, densest human emotion, can you, can you guess what it is, our friend? Uh, what would you think is the heaviest, densest human emotion? Sadness, depression, um, not being joy-filled. Um, I don't know. I'm on, I don't know. Tell me. So, so Hey, all, all of those are, are a good guess. Some would say to us that, well, well, fear. Fear is the heaviest, densest human emotion. We say, well, yes, it is a heavy, dense emotion, but, but it still motivates you to take some action. If you were out in the woods and, and there was a bear, you, you, you would be motivated from that fear to run. It still, it, it still motivates you to, to movement. And, and, and your life unfolds through motion, through movement, through energy. Right? So, so then you say sadness or depression, right? Or, or, or hopelessness, very heavy, dense emotion. It, it, it almost renders you motionless. And in many cases it does. But it's not the heaviest, densest human emotion. The heaviest, densest human emotion is shame. Because it renders you motionless and says that it's your fault. You messed up so badly. You're so flawed. You screwed up that you carry this deep, deep shame. You've even created spiritual shame. You start blaming yourself for having manifested the end of a relationship or manifesting the loss of a job or manifesting a disease. And now you have this spiritual shame where you feel shame because you have a cold. Shame is the heaviest, densest human emotion. It's what keeps you from knowing your truth. And so, when you can say to yourself and begin to be conscious of this, just being conscious of it will begin to change your experience. You've given it to the light. Let the shame come. It could be from, from a year ago or 10 years ago or childhood. It, could, it is these things that you have learned that you're not good enough, you've screwed up, you haven't done it the way someone wanted, you, you had debt, you got fired, you, you, you took from another, you let another take from you. You got divorced. You think you weren't a good mother. You think you weren't a good son or brother. And you carry this heavy, heavy, heavy shame. And so when you can say to yourself, when you catch this shame coming to the light, because it will now, because you're conscious of it, and you say to yourself, I am forgiven. I am forgiven. 
I am forgiven because you are. From the highest perspective, the truth within your soul is that all is forgiven. There is only love. The highest affirmation is actually that there is only love, but sometimes you can't get there from there and you have to move through the process of I am forgiven. Maybe you even created something that you thought you wanted and you got it and then you didn't want it anymore. You thought you wanted a spouse and to be married and you found the right person and you married them and now you don't want it anymore and now you're feeling shame for getting divorced. You have, you have shame in your manifestations. If you can catch it and say, I am forgiven. I am forgiven. Everything is happening for me. There is data. There is information. I have explored lower vibrational frequencies. I've explored being a victim. I've explored controlling others. I've explored lack. You've explored all things. There is no judgment in any of that. Nothing is bad or good from that perspective. And if things come to light of how others have hurt you and you have carried shame because of, of the choices of another, just say, all is forgiven. All is forgiven. Because when you are not forgiving another, you, you, are, you are not forgiving yourself. You are holding on to something that's creating the very resistance from allowing the love that you desire into your life that's always there for you. And if you can get to, I am forgiven and all is forgiven, then you will work to the place of there is only love. There is only love. There is only love. There is only love. And from that place, you begin to restore the very thing that you're going to need in order to move into the next evolution of mastering this human experience that you're living in. And that is to return to your innocence. Return to your innocence. When you are manifesting from a wounded part of you, when you are choosing what you want to fill some lack within you because you have not restored your innocence, those manifestations are never going to feel the way you want them to feel. But when you return to your place of innocence, you know this place. As if you were a child with the sun on your face, dancing in, in total freedom, total bliss, total joy, wanting to be a superhero and all it took was you to run inside and get a cape and put it over your shoulders and now you're a superhero. No gap between you and that which you desire. No gap between you and the manifestation of what you want because you are coming at it from a place of absolute innocence. This is the next evolution of spiritual mastery of your human experience. The next evolution of law of attraction, if you wish to call it that, is to manifest from your place of innocence where your manifestations are impeccable and always in alignment to your soul's desires. That's what you really are going for. Not the manifestation of more human desires, the manifestation of your soul's desires. Your soul is the most innocent part of you and we, you can restore your innocence, return to your place of innocence. You allow the divine to work through you in the highest and best good of you and of the all, of the whole, of your human family. Your life will change. You will step into the next evolution of what is here for you in this human experience. That is where you're going from your place of innocence. From your place of innocence, there is wisdom, there is love, there is joy, there is desire, but you do not create a gap. When you say, I want this thing, you instantly put this carrot out in front of you. you. You have this big carrot out in front of you, and the bigger you make the carrot, the farther out there you put it. But the carrot is on a stick that is, that is tied to your back. So however fast you go and wherever you go, the carrot's always out in front of you. You create these huge gaps between what you want and where you are. And we want you to close the gap. You close the gap by returning to your place of innocence. Finding a way in this day to realize the manifestation of the thing that you most want. Because there's data and information in it that in, in, 
exploring that manifestation will lead to the expansion of your soul. You, you are never going to stop desiring ever. Mm -hmm. Ever. Does this all make sense to you, our friend? It does, it does. I mean, uh, what, what is the evolution of the soul then? Once, once, once the soul is not wanting to return here, does it get to the space where you're at then, in the sense? I, so, so you think that, that, that you are the fallen ones sometimes that have come here to fix some wrong part of you before you can sit on the throne of a, as, a, as an archangel or a master, and that is not the case. You are the brave ones, the courageous ones that came forth and took a body to be part of what is going on in this human experience at this time because it is the best thing going on anywhere. Right here, right now in your human experiences, you chose to come here because you knew that what was so exciting in the universe right now was going on here. You're the brave one, courageous one, that came forth and took a body okay. to be part of the human experience at this time. We are all here in support of you. Okay. We are here for you. We are holding the vibration of the truth of who you are so you do not get lost on your path. We are here guiding you, inspiring you, holding the vibration where you're inspired mm -hmm. ideas, where inspired wisdom of infinite intelligence, of, of all the truth that is ever known. But what's the evolution of that then? So, so you're always going to be coming more. So you came into this life experience to be a part of what's going on here at this time. And you may choose to come back. You, you may choose to explore other densities. There, your experience as a soul, you explore multiple different dimensions, you call them, or densities. You go into these densities for the experience. However, understand that you are already perfect. And when you understand this, your, your life will change because you, you are already whole and worthy and complete and magnificent and so very loved. Yeah. And yet, you're always expanding and always becoming more. That is the evolution of the soul. But then it feels like, to me, with that, with that experience I had last night when I was, um, when I got to see some tr truth that I wanted to see, I guess, where it was almost like you that I speak to now through Sarah had already had your evolution or, or some sort of process that you'd have gone through and you were, help, you were helping awaken us to come back to that space where you are at because there's a further space to go on beyond that, beyond where you're at. There's indeed, further... indeed, indeed. Everything you're saying is true and correct. Yeah. And then added to what you've just said as well, that we've not fallen, but we're on this journey. Right, and as you begin to hold more light in your body, as you begin to allow more of your soul to come through you, so that there's, there's not this gap between the personality you and the, the soul, the higher vibrational you. You, you, you come into alignment with that power and you allow yourself to be the greatest vessel for light and love and vibration. You expand your consciousness. And, and when you expand your consciousness, so when you think about all the problems in the world that you have, suffering of, of people and animals and harg, hunger and, and, and war and all of these things, when you have reached a level of conscious awareness, when you are awake, as we say, or have reached some level of enlightenment, you don't harm another. You don't need to choose for another. You don't need to control another. Sure. You live from a, a, a higher place. And, and you only become more and more and more. But you do not judge those that are exploring lower vibrations because you too have also explored limitation and powerlessness and explored all these things. And there's no hurry, there's no rush, there's no expectation or judgment ever. Have you explored it though? All, we have all explored and all been all things. We've all been all things. You as well. As well, we are a collective and we have been all things. We've explored all things. You have too. And, and just because you're hu here in this human experience now does not mean at one point you weren't fully operational as, as one and a sixth or seventh or higher dimension. That's where you came from, to the physical life experience, the physical plane. Not because you, you, you 
needed to right some wrong, but because that this is the place that you chose to come and project for the expansion of your soul. Now, you understand that in this year's time, in your human experience, although there's no time and space, like, like you, you describe it exactly, all time is circular. You, you end up in these loops, essentially. But, but understand that in this year's time, your universe can, can be measured in having expanded million times over, millions of times over. So you are an, an, a part of this expansion. Now you're, you're, you're going to ask us what it's all for, right? But from the, the, the perception of the human brain, you, you cannot perceive the more with your logical mind. You cannot perceive it with your physical senses. It's a feeling of that more, a feeling of that place beyond the light where you are pure service. I kind of got to experience something last night that was, yes, beyond words and just relatively crappy human words would only explain that which I can't explain. But it was almost like there was a void of absolute immense everything. And it was nothing and everything at the same time. Ah, yes. And I was saying to Sarah that what we're here, where, where you're coming through right now and where I am right now, this is just a spark. This is just a pinprick in the void of nothingness. Just the only bit of light that was in that void that I saw was this reality, which is all the realities, multidimensional, infinitive universes and everything. Even an infinitive universe is a pinprick in the, in, in, in the look of the all of nothing. If you had it on a canvas, it would just be the most tiniest white dot that you could even imagine. And even the canvas wouldn't be large enough because it's infinitive. <laughs> then we refer to that space as, as all that is capital A, capital T, capital I. All that is, it leaves nothing out. All that is, all that is. But the, so, all, the all that is to me seemed that it, it was on a vacation or something. So what do you mean by a vacation? It had given its, itself for it to have this experience. It had, it had diluted itself down to the microscopic I can't remember the word I was using today. See the, 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 this this spark, and you are that spark, and so much more. So some people have asked us, well, "Where is God? Is God out to lunch? Is God out to lunch because there's suffering going on in this world? Where is God?" And we say, "No, God isn't out to lunch." There's not some God outside of any of you that is bringing love to this world, that is bringing joy to this world, that is bringing peace to this world. You are the giver of love. You are the source of love. You are the receiver of love. You are the giver of love. You are the receiver of love. But you are the source of love in the world. There's nothing outside of you all here that's going to bring love to the world. There's not something outside of you in physical form that's going to bring joy to the world. There's nothing outside of you that's going to bring peace. It's you that brings it. We come forth because we promised we would so that you would never forget the truth of who you are. So that, that you would not forget that that's how powerful you are. This is why you're here. This is why you're focused here. And you have gifts that only you can give, that you have chosen to bring forth to humanity, which you are doing right now in this incredible consciousness work that you're doing and, and bringing it into the world. This is what you came here to give and more. But be here, because this is where you chose to be. This is where you wanted to be. Oh yeah, no, be right. here, right? But it, you know, doing this work, it does take you out of being here to because I want to know more. Right, but we want you to to as 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 far as you expand out, we want you to expand wide. Meaning, we want you to ground this so deeply into this human experience, That's, so that you can yes. live this and apply this in your lives. When you get. It's the same as if we say be in the present moment and you, and you want to be living in the future. If you get too far out, you're trying to figure out how to make it happen okay. and when it's going to happen. 
And so you get a little stressed and a little anxious and a little overwhelmed because you're trying to figure out how you're going to make it all happen in the future. I felt that right? what I got through yesterday, when, when, I, when I felt that this all greatness, this infinitive, vast, unmeasurable, unnameable allness that gave itself to create this spark, did it so that one day hopefully it'll reignite itself to know then maybe what it was more of than what it was before it gave itself to this. Ah, and that is the perfect definition of, of, of you and what you are experiencing. It's the perfect definition of consciousness, awakening, enlightenment, realization, self-realization, self-actualization, ascension. You just gave the perfect definition of you. But then it gave me the answer as well that you, that comes through now, which is me as well and everyone else that's watching this, but you as a separateness that shows itself as separate right now, you're the one or you're the part of us that's had fully, uh, that's kind of awoken more and that's now trying to allow this game to play out because this game's going to play out for a very long time maybe, if that's the illusion it shows itself. And it's almost like it wants to do this so that it's... It, you're, you're kind of wanting to wake us up, yet you're kind of wanting us to play it out. Well, because in, understand, in higher vibrations, as, as, you, as you emerge into higher vibrations and you ground higher vibrations in this human experience that you're having, as you, as you do that, you begin to understand that communication is not communication like you know it to be right now. Your, your communication, because you're so tuned in to the truth of who you are and your vibration and the feeling sense of you, that words are not needed. All communication is transparent. So, so you're, you're learning to operate at vibrations where, where communication is evolving and where it's evolving into is this place of transparent communication where no words are needed. All things are communicated as if you would say telepathically. But does this truth take me out of present moment? So, if everything is here for you, right here, right now, in this moment, even if you can't see it. So what happens is, when you come into this physical experience, you understand that there's a, a density that you step into. When you, when you focus through a human body, this you you know as you, this magnificent personality that is you, you step into density and you start focusing and perceiving through your brain. Which, which operates through the, the physical senses. And so when, when someone comes, when a, when a soul comes into the human experience, it's far more traumatic uh, experience than when they go out. So you celebrate these births, a joyous experience, right? But, but, but that's a little more difficult for the soul to come in and squeeze this, this big, big, big thing. It would be like taking a 10 foot tall person and trying to squeeze them into a shoebox. But you get in here, and you want to be here, and you're so excited to come forth, and you have this experience, and in the moment that you re-emerge back into physical, the soul experienced the most blissful transformation back into the oneness, back into the love, back into their wholeness, the joy, the bliss that is there for them, and yet you grieve them as if they're gone. And, and the heaviness of this is what holds them apart from you because you cannot perceive them because they've left the density of the body to emerge into a higher vibration. So you understand this. And then begin to understand that not only is that one person you're thinking of that re-emerged back in physical, not only are they here focused on you, but millions and millions and millions more. The higher self of everyone that's in a physical body could also be here focused on you. But you're not aware of it and tuned into it. So it's not about living in the future, it's about living fully present to all that's here for you in the now moment, which is infinite wisdom, guidance, intelligence, support, love, resource, awareness, answers, perspective. It is those of us that are in non-physical and your soul that always has the highest perspective because we are beyond the limitation of the density of the human body. We're not saying, get out of the now moment in any way. We're saying if you're fully present in this now moment with this level of awareness through your feeling, being open through your vibration to all the communication that's here for you, you'll be living more present in this moment than ever before. Does that make sense to you? Oh yeah, I mean, you know, and, and having this human experience is just so important not to uh, want to sort of, you know, 
oh, I've got the answer now, so can, can I go? <laughs> I want to stay here for some reason. I think I... Well, not for some reason. It's just kind of... Because um... the second you re-emerge, you're going to say, oh, let me go back. I forgot how easy it was. Let me go back. I got it. I got it. Let me go back. And the moment you take that breath, you're going to say, oh, yeah. And then you're going to say, oh, yeah, let me go back. I remember now how easy it was. I forgot. And, uh, uh, and so many of you go through this progression as you begin to awaken. And we talk about this, that many of you in the last 10 years have gone through this awakening experience. And many, 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 many more are going to go through it in the next years to come. But those of you who are the way showers that went through it so that you can hold the vibration and bring forth the information to help others understand what is going on in their lives so that this transformation can be easier, more effortless, more loving, more harmonious for, for the, the many, many millions that are going to go through the awakening that you have gone through. Right? You, you, early on in that process of transformation, sometimes you want to get out of here. You say, I, I want out. I, okay, I'm no longer afraid of death. I know there's more. I, I don't want to be here anymore. And then you get to this place where you have it figured out on such a level of awareness and knowingness, fully connected and aligned that you say, this is fun. This is really fun. Not only is this fun, I might just choose to come back and have more incarnations because it's so fun. Because once you are at this level of awareness, you have advanced your own consciousness. You have, you have contributed to the, the evolution of consciousness. Are, 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 you right? look, are, are you getting something from this conversation as and, well? We enjoy this interaction with you so very much and your, your questions are what is expanding the more and the more and the more. Oh, my last name. Right? right. So, so we could come forth here and we could sit here with you. We could bring our vibration in and in, a, in about five minutes your brain would be so perplexed <laughs> by it all. So we come forth and we bring forth our words merely to entertain this magnificent brain of yours which is expanding thought. It's a wonderful thing. Well, what it, what it gave me as well, when I got this vision last night through regression, oh, actually, you know, it's regression, that's going to the same place as channeling, isn't it? It's the same place as where you're at, isn't it? Regression techniques. It's, it's indeed. So it, it's just a vibration beyond your limitation. Yes. Where, yes. Where, where you can perceive beyond your human senses. Does that make sense? Uh, so hypnosis, meditation, regression, all of these yeah. things, perceiving beyond yeah. the limitation right, right. Of, of, of the physical experience. Okay. Not because we want you to live beyond the physical experience or push against the physical experience, but so it can be all that you intended it to be. So here's, here's the highest perspective we want you to understand in, in, in this particular instance. You're here in the physical experience on, on Earth, Gaia, the planet that you know as, as Gaia Earth, right? And you yes. have this humanity that's here. But you understand that, that this Earth is integral in the, the universe, right? If you, if you took Earth out of it, you, you, you change, collapse, affect the whole universe, all, right? All the multiverses, right? yes. Right, but what is the Earth anyway, right? If you think about it, what is it? A spaceship ah, in space. Yes. <laughs> You are just on a spaceship traveling through space. So imagine if, 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 if that spaceship is, is, is got more firepower, more, more turbo power, right? Can go faster, farther, intentionally, consciously. Where does it go? What, what, where, what comes next, right? This is why the, the, we, we speak of things like the new earth, heaven on earth, right? That, that your, your, your planet has shifted into a higher vibration and, and your humanity is going through the transformation of also shifting into that higher vibration. So we talk about the fact that there are, are different densities, different planes of different densities and dimensions and vibrations, right? But, but imagine you're lifting this whole planet into a higher vibration, a, a, a higher density. There's intention. You're going somewhere. But don't get too distracted in all of that, that you don't find joy in this experience here. Are, are, are you experiencing great joy in your life? When you ask yourself that, if the answer is anything less than, yes, this is the most magnificent life experience, 
And sometimes you might be getting too much in your head trying to figure it all out instead of just allowing it to be and unfold through you the divine right time, the divine right way. Well, I guess maybe my, I just, you know, it's just my... Curiosity, yeah, you know? Yeah, you know, I wanted to share that with other people. I mean, is it my major, 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 major joy? I think I'd rather be having sex, to be honest with you. So <laughs> go do that. We tell you, do the things that bring you joy, right? But right. To, make, to make money out of that would be, it seem a bit wrong. But, <laughs> whoa, but that's because in your human experiences, you have decided as a collective that that is wrong. You've decided that, that that is wrong. But there's not one of you who does not in some way I I exchange a, a resource gift that you have for money. A passion that you have. We, we, we say, figure out what you're passionate about, go do that. Right? Your careers, your work, it should be the things that bring you joy. It is your mass consciousness, your human experience that has decided that it's not okay for someone to exchange their body for another resource, the resource that is the body for the resource that is money. That is not our judgment ever. And, and from the highest perspective, you don't need money. I, I think most, if, if you're going to talk, if, let's just carry this conversation on, why not? I think if you're going to refer to the, the adult industry in some ways to doing that, I think you'll find that most women in that industry have very child abuse passes. Indeed, and that, that is what, what, what we, we would say is, is most of the time it, 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 in, in the sex industry like you're talking about, it, it, is, it is being exchanged from a place of, of brokenness, un, unhealed parts, so that unhealing is what is being exchanged. The, it, and it just perpetuates the unconsciousness to, to taking from another, right? So we are not advocating that in any way. And, and when people are exploring being used or being a victim, and, and, and using others, yeah. and, and, and from a state of consciousness, you, you, you do not live that way, you do not choose that way. So, so allow another, that we, we say, the greatest love is to allow another the consequences of their choices. Choosing to heal, choosing consciousness, but, but allow them their journey. You may, in, in lives past, also explored being a prostitute. You could have explored the, the being victimized and, and, and feeling small and worthless and feeling like there was no source that was aware of you, feeling like there was no infinite supply that would care for you and provide for your needs. And you might have believed that the, you were in such bondage that the only way that you could survive was to exchange your body for sex. So there is no judgment ever from the soul level because you have all been all things. And you're not here to fix a broken world. You cause your own suffering when you try to choose for another. So what should you do, right? Shine the light on, on harmonious, loving, sexual relationships that are coming from a place of fullness. We say that the ideal relationship is not a relationship that makes you fall more in love with the other person. It is the relationship that allows you to realize a greater level, a deeper level of your own self-love. When you're falling in love with someone, you are seeing the very, very best of them, which is the truth of them. That's why it feels so good before you start picking them apart with the way they should be or you want them to be. Or, or poking at who has more pain and more, more, more baggage and more trauma, right? But the same is true that when you're falling in love with someone, they are projecting back to you deeper levels of your own self-love that you had not explored until this person came into your life. But it's the one subject, isn't it, that it is the one thing that we don't speak, I was saying this to Lee as well, the one that, someone that Sarah knows, it's the one subject that this community does not want to explore a lot, and it's the one thing that's that, that, that the most creative force in the universe. 
It, it is, and so, so we talk about this, and, and, and some of your books, you, you even have a, a great book here that, that is, is called Think and Grow Rich, and one of the things in the book is on sexual transmutation, when you can learn to fully receive that, that sexual desire energy through you, and you can guide it in a way that, that, that it ignites you and inspires you and creates tremendous momentum towards the things that you desire. It's a very powerful, powerful, powerful force. The reason it's a touchy subject is that it can also be incredibly distracting. You can also lose yourself in another, right? And that's why we say to, to transmute it, to move it, to allow it to flow through you. So you get into these relationships. So people come to us all the time and they say, I want to manifest the love of my life, my soulmate, my dream lover. And, and, and when they first come together, it's very beautiful and harmonious because they are reflecting back to each other their wholeness and worthiness. They're exploring deeper levels of their own love of self that they could not even have experienced without the mirror of this other person, which is magnificent. And so they're holding this love and it's just flowing and flowing and flowing and they're holding it. But then over a period of time, your human mind comes in, your, your, your mass conscious ideas come in and you say, well, you must marry this person, you must live together, you must do these things. And you start grasping onto that love. You start trying to fit it in a box and limit it. And when you try to limit it, it sort of backlashes at you and that's when it changes. Because you're, you're trying to, to, to humanize something like power, love, flow, I, energy, force, right? I think, I think we do that for sometimes just to show commitment with each other. And that's a wonderful thing, but your commitments should be very different than the commitments you make. You no, say, I'm going to love you forever, sickness and health, no matter how miserable I am, that I'd, I'd rather die from holding myself in a lower vibration than ever divorce you. And, 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 and to each your own, we are not choosing for another. There's no judgment from our side ever. But the commitment, that only commitment that you can make is right here, right now, in this moment, I love you and I desire to be with you, but let's see how it goes because what? you're always expanding. And when relationships work really well is when you allow another their expansion and, and that you can be aware of expanding together. Most of the time what happens is one person expands over here and this person doesn't expand very far at all. And then you find yourself in a different place from each other. Or both people begin expanding. And you expand in different directions. You're unconscious of it. And then you find yourself in two different places. Because your expansions have led you to two different places. And then you hold yourself in this place that, that doesn't feel very good. Because you've already expanded your own being beyond it. And then that relationship begins to feel like bondage. You feel like you're controlled. You feel like you can't move, right? You, you mentioned something. Put, thank you. Yes, thank you for that. You meant, you know, you, you you said something about the 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 addiction to things as well. Almost, you were almost point, hinting towards that that some things can become addictive, right? But then this work could be people could get addicted to this type of teaching. People could get addicted to watching certain type of movies. People get addicted. I mean, if, if you're doing something in your passion, how can you care about if people are going to get addicted to this or not? We like to talk about things from, from a spectrum, right? A, a spectrum of things. So if you look at, if you look at different things, there's, there's a spectrum of, of these things, right? And so we want you to understand the reason we come forth is to help you master holding these higher vibrations, practice them, and, and so that you can begin to be in these higher vibrations, right? And that they feel good to you, they feel like the truth of you, you, you remember through this vibration. And so right now while we're talking to you, we're entertaining your brain, but, but you're holding a higher vibration. And as you do that, every cell in your body begins to change. When, when you, so, so we say that you are your own greatest healers, that you have the ability to raise your vibration to such a level that your own natural healing will always flow through to you if you are not blocking the energy of, of, of source that flows through and heals every cell of your body, right? But, but when you're in lower vibrations, you're, you're, you're holding your body in denser places where, where energy gets blocked and this is what happens with disease, 
right? So if, if one can learn to hold their vibration higher, every cell in your body will begin to restore such that it, it acclimates to holding those vibrations. That's part of why we come forth and that's part of why we sit and entertain your brains at this okay. level so that as you're listening to this, you're recalibrating your vibration to the truth of who you are so that you can allow the vibration of joy to be your, your new vibrational set point. And the world will open up to you from there. But we, we are not your truth. We, we never say to, to, to give us your power and make us your truth. What feels right to you? We are always guiding you to the truth of who you are, helping you remember who you are, why you're here, what you intended, what your powerful purpose is. Right? We okay. are here for you. Okay. And, and the, the progression of this is where this is going, which is important for you to understand because you're playing such an integral role in this. You're, you're, you're bringing the awareness of, of this to, to the forefront where people begin to understand that your great writers were receiving from some place outside of just their limited personality. That your athletes are performing at a level sometimes beyond what is even thought possible for a human being because they're inviting this power in. This power that creates worlds, this power that does the impossible, this power that can heal anything in your body. So the same is true in what you call channeling, right? Allowing through this infinite wisdom, infinite intelligence that is there. And then there are some courageous, brave ones of you who are coming forth at this time to make it a very normal thing, a very, a very, a very uh, consumable type thing so that you, you, you begin to, to open yourself a bit to it. But, but where you, you are all going is, is to begin to find this truth, wisdom, power, vibration, remembrance, all within you. All within you. Your, your great said, you can do all that I have done and even greater things. We aren't the, the goal here. We, we, are, we are here for you to realize all that you are. Okay. And we are always with you. We are always available to you. Source, infinite intelligence, divine wisdom, your guides, all focused on you at all times available to you. Most of you don't ask. And understand, when you're asking, you're not in the vibration usually of the answer. So most of the time, when, when people are in a channeled state of, of receiving this, there's, there's two things. Number one, that there is no judgment. There is only love. At the purest form, there is only love. You see through the eyes of God. And the second is that there isn't any questions. When Sarah's receiving us, she doesn't have any questions because she's in the knowingness where all your answers are. And there's no need to seek out every answer because you know the exact answer that you need will be there when you need it, right? It's this trust in something greater than yourself that you can just experience the in instant manifestation of love. Well, I have run out of Earth time. It's now 1.30. I've got to get on an Earth road to see Bashar next. And I so very much love what you've had to say. Uh, it's a lot to think about. Uh, it gives me a headache even right now. But just thank you, in a headache in a good way, don't worry. <laughs> just thank you so, so much. We have never had one leave us with a headache. Usually they're feeling very, very good, but we assure you this is all in your highest and best good and will lead to the miraculous unfolding of a new state of awareness and consciousness by which you will explore more and more and more. And so we have enjoyed this interaction with you so very much. We love you. We love you. We love you. And with that, we are complete.